Before Tears of the Kingdom came out, I was a little worried it wouldn't be able to live up to the tremendous hype of its predecessor. But I think we all gave a collective sigh of relief when it finally came out and instead improved on nearly every aspect of Breath of the Wild. The temples felt like distinct locations with unique bosses rather than just copy-paste metal chambers. Weapon degradation still exists, but feels much less burdensome because of the pivotal fuse mechanic. Heck, even that opening shot that became so iconic in the original is now met with an even more breathtaking view as you make your first descent down to Hyrule proper. I was absolutely glued to this game until I rolled credits over 60 hours later. And if I had to describe Tears of the Kingdom in one word, it would be layers. Obviously part of that is because instead of just one giant area to explore, you now have three that are stacked on top of each other. One of which was somehow kept a secret before release, which I am so glad was the case. Because jumping down into a chasm for the first time was unlike anything I've ever experienced in a Zelda game before. I feel like The Depths is this game's version of the Dark World. Similar layout, but with harder enemies and a lot trickier to traverse. It was so cool having to light your way around, constantly worried you're about to stumble on a giant boss or something. Not to mention that you can literally dive from the Sky Islands all the way down into the depths in one jump, which is an insane game development achievement in its own right. But this game also has layers because of its story essentially being laid upon the groundwork from the original. Some locations you visited in Breath of the Wild are now thriving communities, others are left in ruins. I mean, you even got time travel, a new race of people to learn about, and dragons play a much bigger role in this one, who doesn't love dragons? But what impressed me the most about Tears of the Kingdom was how it gave even more purpose to nearly every single game mechanic that it introduced. Ultra Hand, Fuse, Rewind, and Ascend feel like the natural progression of the Sheikah Slate abilities. It almost makes Stasis and Magnesis seem like a beta for what they decided to turn it into here. And the sheer Pandora's box of possibilities that Zonai Devices opens up is equally staggering, impressive, and hilarious. I made a video on Breath of the Wild back in 2017, and praised it for having a reason to want to go and explore because its collectibles all had value, which felt like the perfect way to create an open world experience. But here, the trinkets you find don't just have one purpose, it feels like they all have multiple reasons to exist, making the gameplay loop of exploring and always finding something useful that much more addicting and satisfying. I mean, think about it, those monster parts that were only used to upgrade your armor or make elixirs in Breath of the Wild are now all useful to fuse to your weapons or arrows to increase their damage output. Losing a strong sword doesn't feel nearly as heartbreaking because you can always make something decent when you're in a pinch. Oh, those towers you had to climb to help fill out your map? Yeah, now they launch you way high into the air, making them a great way to reach Sky Islands or scour the field and quickly mark points of interest on your map. Even something as simple as the horse stables, which were a nice pit stop to rest or register your steed, now are major story and side quest hubs that are all worth visiting, and even unlock the great fairy fountains to upgrade your equipment at all. And the shrines, which were your main way to upgrade health or stamina, are also your fast travel waypoints, which feel a lot more purposeful in their placement this time around. Because stables are more important, if you find one, there's always a shrine nearby. In fact, I would say all of the previous main discoverables like shrines, Koroks, and NPC quests now incorporate the Zonai devices in some way to encourage you to experiment and test out your skills with Ultra Hand. You can learn how they work in shrines and then test them out for yourself to help a Korok find its buddy. Or do the unspeakable. You see, a log isn't just a log anymore. Now it could be a solution to most any puzzle if you're clever enough. But let's be real, the glider is really the best option for any situation. So how about the depths and the sky islands? What did Nintendo do to make them worth exploring? Well, turns out, a whole frickin' lot. The big one, of course, is auto-build, an efficient creator's dream, letting you generate machines that you've built previously as long as you have the materials present. Or you can use Zonite, a resource you can only find down here in the depths, to produce it anywhere you want. But that's not all Zonite is useful for. You can trade it in for crystallized charges, which can increase your battery power to use Zonite devices for longer periods of time. All of these aid you in the act of exploration so that you can travel further and find more useful things, like powerful base weapons that aren't decayed by gloom since they're below the surface, special schematics found in Yiga Clan hideouts that give you pre-built vehicles and devices for your auto-build library, or pose to buy specific things that can only be found at bargainer statues. 
Oh, not to mention the light routes, which not only brighten up the underworld and act as waypoints, but also correspond with shrines up on the surface, which can help you hunt down those last few elusive ones by marking them on your map. As for the Sky Islands, you can find fairies to help with your survivability, special falling challenges to unlock the glide armor, probably the most useful set in the game, shrine gems attached to flux constructs, which also give some nice bonuses of their own, and uh, what the sages will? I didn't even find one of these until I was 40 hours into the game. How does it just keep coming up with more collectibles? I swear, this is the new Donkey Kong 64. Oh, and remember all those Zonai devices you learned how to use by finding shrines? There's the Zonai dispensers up here that you can spend your charges at to gain extra devices in your inventory for easy access. Which, again, all leads back to what the developers clearly want the players to constantly be doing, using their creativity and finding new ways to explore Hyrule to the fullest. I think it's also worth mentioning that the simple act of going and doing these ventures is really fun in its own right. Seeing an island high above me and figuring out how to get there without any handholding or hints to guide me felt really satisfying, especially if they threw in new mechanics like low gravity. All of the game's different aspects work hand in hand to achieve this singular goal. In fact, some of my favorite moments were when it combined going through a trial on land, finding its corresponding switch up in the sky, and unlocking a boss fight down in the depths, all in one linked questline. It's a clear recipe for success, portrayed in a way that makes the player feel like they're the ones in charge of the action, which takes a truly carefully crafted world to pull off. You can still go straight to the end of the game if you want to, or find the Master Sword way earlier than intended. But they also created a little more structure by gating another temple after you complete the first four. Which means they can build a little bit more of a difficulty curve and have a more engaging endgame. Even the enemies feel like they took a big step up in this game. I swear Gleox and Gloomhands are gonna be in my nightmares for years to come. Tears of the Kingdom certainly isn't a perfect experience, but I think many of its faults can be traced back to the same issues found in Breath of the Wild. And I can't help but praise the team here for seeing the groundbreaking accomplishments they made in the first game, and just saying, nah, that's not good enough, we're gonna do it again. And I think what will make Tears of the Kingdom stand the test of time instead of staying in the original shadow is rather than simply providing a lot of fun things to find, it lets the player decide how they want to create that fun for themselves.